the studios of Asian Sound Radio Network. Right, let's have a look at what's happening today. New Zealand authorities are racing to identify the 50 people that were killed in a massacre at two mosques so their families can bury them in accordance with Muslim trans- tradition. In addition, in addition to the people killed in the attack on Friday, 50 others were wounded in the shootings. Of the injured, 34 people remain in Christchurch Hospital, including 12 in intensive care. Islamic tradition calls for a person to be buried as soon as possible after death, ideally within 24 hours. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said yesterday that the authorities had started returning identified bodies to families and all bodies will be returned by Wednesday. Meanwhile, the New Zealand government has agreed to reform the country's gun laws in the wake of last Friday's massacre at the two mosques. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said that the worst act of terrorism on our shores had exposed a range of weaknesses in New Zealand's gun laws. The Prime Minister also announced that there would be an inquiry into the specific circumstances leading up to Friday's attack. The inquiry will look into what agencies knew or should have known about the gunsman's access to weapons or any impediments into the sharing of information. It will also look at the individual's travel movements, activities in New Zealand, use of social media and contact with others. In Pakistan, the nation is observing a day-long mourning today in reverence of the martyred and injured in New Zealand's mass shooting on Friday. The national flag is flying at half-mast across the country. The government has announced this step to express solidarity with the bereaved families in the gruesome terror incident that took place at two mosques in Christchurch. Now, is there a wave of Islamophobia in the West which is increasing with time? The West has failed to control Islamophobia and hatred against Muslims. Western society seems to have lost the traditional value system which teaches tolerance, respect for diversity, peace and love. White nationalists are propagating racism and spreading hate around the world. Western think tanks should take concrete measures to stop such trends including xenophobia and Islamophobia. Such tendencies have led to the outcome in the form of the recent Christchurch mosque attack. Western media is seen as a very biased. If such act is done by a Muslim, it's terrorism. And if it's done by a non-Muslim, it's often termed as an act of violence only. Simple condemnation is not enough. Diplomatic efforts are required to counter Islamophobia. Terrorism is condemnable at every level. The crash of an Ethiopian Airlines plane that left 157 people dead had clear similarities with October's Lion Air crash, shown by initial analysis of the black boxes recovered from the wreckage of the March 10 disaster. The crash has generated one of the most widely seen and high-stakes inquiries for years, with the fate of the latest version of Boeing's profitable 737 workhorse depending on the outcome. Both planes were MAX 8s and both crashed minutes post takeoff after pilots reported flight control problems. Concern of the plane's safety led aviation authorities to ground the model, wiping billions of dollars off Boeing's market value. India has undertaken an ambitious project for a bullet train to run between two of the country's major cities. A deal was signed in 2015 with Japan, which is helping to finance its construction. The project is part of the government's commitment to revitalize the country's creaking 165-year-old rail network. The bullet train project was officially launched at a ceremony in September 27, attended by Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. That year, the Indian Ministry of Railways said all-out efforts would be made to complete the high-speed rail project by 15th of August 2022. However, officials involved with the plan now estimate that only a small part of the route will be completed by this time, with the rest finished in 2023. The Congress opposition leader Rahul Gandhi has described it as a magic train that will never be completed. India's vast rail network offers a cheap and vital transport service for 22 million people a day on about 9,000 trains. But travellers have long complained of poor services and a lack of investment in modernisation. That's the latest roundup of the news. I'll have more for you at the same time tomorrow. From the Manchester studios of Asian Sound Radio Network, I'm Farah Humayu. Allah Hafiz.